we went to live on a boat, a Thames barge called Thetis. She was moored in Chiswick, just off the Thames, on an artificial lake with a concrete barrier to keep the water at a constant level. Now it has been filled in for houses and there's just a puddle in the middle with a few token boats. The green weed, in which I would absent-mindedly fall off the bank gangplank from time to time, has gone. Once I saw a little girl, Meg, caught under the weeds, and I called for help as she lay there like Ophelia. That was the year my brother was born, and I abandoned my dress with tiny mauve blue hair bells and insisted on wearing shorts and at night, a pair of striped pyjamas with a proper cord, like a boy's. My best friends were the three Warwick brothers. They lived on Ariel, a motor torpedo boat, made of grey steel with a sharp, long prow. I would get up early and play all day with them. When it was bedtime, my stepfather would boom out my name across the water and through the bushes and trees and he wouldn't stop until I arrived. It was so shaming that I came running. On the river's muddy shore at low tide, there were rubber dolls and condoms, bits of wood, bicycle wheels, golf balls, ragged brooms, and broken willow branches. The worried boys told me about the condoms, flaccid rubber floating among the debris like old grey balloons. Once, we saw a dead man lying on the shore. We knew he was dead because he was purple and puffy. The people around him told us to stay away, but we managed to see him. He was wearing blue overalls, lying flat with his arms stretched stiff at his sides. Each summer, we motored up the Thames with the mast down. They opened Tower Bridge for us and we moored by the wharves and warehouses of East London. The tide was fast there, and the water rushed by noisily. The paths were covered with the drapes of offloaded cargo, butter beans, bananas, spices, and coal dust. On deck one night, I heard running footsteps and a splash in the water. I could see a shape clinging onto our mooring chain. A police launch came by and they shouted out to me if I'd seen anyone. I paused. I knew he was there in the water. Maybe he was listening. No, I said. We would put the mast up and sail into the estuary past Grays, which was then a deserted place. There was just a chandler's, a boat business and lots of wild kittens. To this day, I love derelict land with shattered huts, purple buddlier bushes, old tin cans and broken glass littered among yellow flowers, dandelion and hawkweed, coltsfoot and toe flags. One summer, we were heading for Who in Kent, and we anchored offshore where there was nothing but marshland. I was probably 10. Alone, I rode the dinghy towards the far off shore through the waves that bashed against one side, hard. I was frightened. Go to Leewood, yelled my stepfather from the barge deck. But I didn't know what that was, and he wouldn't tell me. I landed in the marshes. There were lots of sheep, rams too, with fierce yellow-green eyes, and there was no one around. I noticed a shed and through a crack, I saw an eye. It was watching me. I went in, and a man was there. We fell into conversation. I felt like Jemima Puddle Duck being chatted up by the fox. I was wearing my grey shorts. They were wide-skirted in those days. When he said there was a place on my body that if he touched it, I would be paralysed, I quickly asked him the way to the shops and he told me. Now, whenever there's a grey mist and the rain falls flat on the water, I feel the wooden barge with her great tan sails moving silently, slowly, and I miss her. Mm -hmm.